All right, so I get black. All right, hello, good luck, have fun, etc. Play well, don't cheat. Um, yeah, this should be fun. Um, yeah, I think we're ready. Cool. Well, let the show begin. Yep, yep, yep. I'm ready when you are. I'll just say good luck again and again. All right, there's e4. I'm going to play e5. And we'll probably get into a Rui Lopez. Everybody enjoys the Rui. It's an okay opening. Let me turn this on. There we go. Yep, we're, looks like we're heading toward a Rui Lopez. Oh, let's check that out. Actually, I'm going to change my mind and play the two knights defense. Um, and we're going to play this aggressive line of the two knights. And hopefully I'm not going to hang my army. That's always the trick here, is um, not giving up boatloads of material in the opening. Um, so I think he's planning queen b3, just piling it all on this diagonal. Um, I think bishop e7 is okay though. Bishop d6 loses the knight. Knight b6 exposes f7 pretty badly. Knight f6 loses f7 to knight g5. Um, bishop e6 is okay. It does give up the bishop pair. Uh, knight a5 gives up the e-pawn. I'm really drawn to bishop e7 for some reason. Yeah, bishop e7, if he doubles up there, I can do bishop e6. And if queen b7, I've got knight a5, queen b5, c6, queen moves. I take the bishop, and I'm down a pawn, but that's okay. Um, do I have better? Probably. Am I going to find it? I don't know. Maybe. I'm just really worried about this pawn in the center. Um, this guy here. It's kind of a burden. All right. Well... Oh, I'm so tempted to just knight f4 and wing it. If knight f4, he just castles, and what do I do? Uh, my knight's really loose. This looks fun, though. Let's explore. This is way more fun than passive defense. Um, I like how we've maneuvered into this completely clumsy opening. Um, because I'm just being inattentive today. First I play knight f6 on a whim. Second I play d5 because it looks aggressive. And now I'm kind of piling up on g2 and d3. Um, I don't know about c3, honestly. If anything, c3 does weaken d3. And now I'm threatening to follow up with bishop d6 and grasp the dark squares. Um... And if he tries to do anything menacing with queen b3, I could always counter bishop e6. Or knight d3. I mean, there's a lot of options on the table here. I've possibly gone for the most insane line here. Anything could happen. Anything will happen. Um, so, yeah. At least I've got him thinking. It's not just me. It's not just a case of me being silly. Also, if knight e5, I could do knight e5. Sack the knight on f4. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to protect all this. 
And his big idea might be to try to pin and win on the e-file. I don't think it wins anything, though. So I just castle. Right? I've got a castle. Otherwise, I lose my knight. I mean, bishop e6 might have been playable, but it's really sharp. Um, I just feel like castle's got to be correct. And uh, what supports my intuition here is that, say if we exchange, I don't know, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop f4, knight c4, he takes c4, I take f4. I think tactics are okay there. I am one tempo faster developed than he is, because well, I don't even know how. I guess c3 is the wasted tempo. Um... If I wanted to pile up on a target, that's definitely a target. If I wanted to sack, this is definitely a place where sacking could happen. It's probably not going to work right now, but um, in the future, it's, to, it's a possibility for sure. Um, the most glaringly obvious move is bishop g4, just being as aggressive as possible. Um, bishop f5 is a bit more constrained, a bit more level-headed. Um, it does discourage knight bd2. Yeah, why don't I do bishop f5? I know I am worried about knight f4, or knight h4. Um, but then I could just go back. Yeah, let's try this. Unless he's got, like, knight takes e5. I just take back of the bishop. It's okay. So this is my target. It's kind of inconvenient for him to meet, because he can't go there. This is covered. Um, and he doesn't want to step into this pin either. Okay. So now I've gotten the bishop here. Sure, I do have doubled pawns. And he has a slightly larger control of the center than I. But I have gotten the bishop here, and I can just reroute my bishop. All these ideas take time. It's the one consideration that's problematic. Uh, well, where is he going next? I just need to finish developing, and I'll be on my way. Um... I don't see how he finishes his development. So if I do queen d7, he's got knight e5 maybe. Um, that doesn't work. So queen d7, if knight e5, knight takes knight, pawn takes, oops, you don't do knight takes, you do bishop takes first, and then pawn takes, and then knight takes, and the knight protects my queen. And regardless which of these gets taken first, the other one's hanging. So yeah, knight e5 um, is a way to lose a pawn in really flashy style. Um, now what's the point of queen d7? The point is to allow rook e8, which again controls the e5 square. Um, so... I mean, yeah, this knight e5 would force me to give back the bishop pair, but I gain a pawn doing it. Okay, so now he's just conceded the center in some... I made some minor victory here. Um, so, let's just bolt right in. Now the square is controlled three times by me, uh, three times by him. So he can't afford to move any piece there. Um, likewise, this square is controlled equally twice by me, twice by him. I've made it very inconvenient for him to try moving into the center. He's going to need some other path forward. Meanwhile, what's my plan? Other than frustrating my opponent's plans. Is there anything I can do? So, 
I mean, I think my plan is to play king h8 and f6 or something. Yeah, okay, I was kind of expecting this. So, so far, this game, my plan has just been to frustrate my opponent's plans. Here, I can't really stop him from pinning me. And now he's threatening d5. And I'm, I have no choice but to break this pin. Um, so that's what's going to happen. I just have no choice whatsoever in that matter. Um, there was no other way for me to stop d5 without conceding heavy material. So, okay, I am forced to advance on the queen side. I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, this does leave a lot of space behind, but I think I'm a-okay. -okay. Um, now, while he's going on these excursions, I could go bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, and he can't break that pin. For whatever reason, well, okay, that is his good bishop. He doesn't want to trade it for my bishop, but... Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's what's going on. Um... Normally, he would want to go through e5, but I got e5 covered. I got a lot of these center squares very heavily covered. Um, it's difficult for him to make any meaningful progress here. Do I break with b4? That would be aggressive. That would be very aggressive. Um... And it's too early to do queenside breaks because the center is well supported and this knight protects the center. If I do bishop g4, he just says queen c2, and I go back. And best case, he repeats, but probably he doesn't repeat. Probably he finds something better. Um, so, yeah. Finding a way forward is tricky because this bishop does not complement my pawns very well. Um, I could do h6, g5, g4. I kind of want my king to be on the dark square. Um, but h6 does create more space at the expense of giving up squares around my king. It seems like a most unwise trade. Um, now how do I make some inroads in this position? I've pretty well controlled much of this side of the board. I will need to push g5 somehow. h6 is a little bit faster than king h8. I can do h6, king h7, g5. My king's out of the way and not in the corner. Um, but maybe I want my king in the corner. Maybe h7 is too exposed. I don't know. This is tricky to gauge. Also, this bishop isn't going to complement things very well if I push h6. There's no opportunity to like swing the bishop to h6. Um, I could do bishop e7, g5, bishop f6. But in this process, I've given up the e5 square. Yeah, I'm thinking just king h8. It's unfortunate that the rooks oppose each other here. Um, the only next question on my mind is, can I afford to throw g5 without guarding it first? Uh, tactically, is that justified? Can I play g5, knight takes g5, rook g8? Probably not. So probably I do need to play... Oh. Well, how about that? Uh, he's trying to occupy this square, maybe. Um, so, do I go forward with my idea of f6 here? Um, this is tricky. I might want to play f5 at some point, so maybe h6 is the way to go. For all kinds of reasons, h6 seems like the right move here, but it's weakening. Um, so 
So what do I do? Oh, do I chase his bishop now? Is now the time for me to go hunting on the queen side? It seems awfully weird to do that. Um, but if he lands a knight there, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot going on here. There's definitely a lot going on here. But it appears he's going to try to win back the bishop here, and it's difficult for me to stop. Um, so, yeah, I think now I do have to play knight a5. My knight wasn't going anywhere else. And this makes... This in combination with c5 will make room for my other pieces. Or maybe c6. Um, yeah, my king side's pretty well fortified. This knight on the edge looks pretty silly. But I think I'm doing fine. I can... Oh, a potential problem with h6 is he just plays queen h5 and my pawn's pinned. So h6 is not nearly as good as I was suggesting it to be a second ago. Um, now at least against queen h5 I just plug it with bishop g6. Maybe that was doable anyhow, but it feels a lot safer this way. There it is, bishop d5 right on schedule. Okay, so bishop goes back. He's going to follow with knight e4. Um, my knight's awfully silly on the edge here, but what can I do? can trade off to get uncramped, which is what I'm going to do. So this space cramp isn't such a big deal when some pieces get traded down. Um, and we approach the end game. This rook on a1 looks a little bit silly out there. Surely he's threatening to push a4, but he doesn't want to push it while my knight could invade. Um, he's also considering... Oh, well, I was going to say, he might be considering either knight to e4. Things get complicated. Um, So as much as I want to play f6, it feels like h6 is the better move here. Um, this forces him to make a move he wants to make anyway. How many times does he have this under control? 1, 2, 3. I've got 1, 2. I could add a third with queen e7. And then if knight e4 I take, he takes, and then I sack my queen. That's not so smart. Um... Um, yeah, this is kind of ugly. F6 is what I want to play, but I don't know why. Um, it'd be fun to transfer my bishop to F6. It's not going to happen. Um... Well, I guess I just go for a kingside attack. So we pull back. The idea is that once he lands his piece on e4, my bishop's out of striking distance of that piece. Um, meanwhile, I can still reroute pieces through this square, or potentially forward through c4. Okay. 
Okay, there's 94. Um, okay. I don't know if I mind giving up. Oh, I'm not even giving up the pawn if he plays that. It's just taking me a little while longer to develop. No, this pawn would be weak, though. Um, okay, so I guess... I guess this is the plan. So this stops knight c5. I'm definitely really tangled up here. I still have the bishop here. And still, if I manage to throw this forward, uh, h6, g5, g4, this is going to be very difficult for white. Um, but he's got some ideas too. We both get to make moves this game. This isn't like some of the previous games I've played in this ladder that have been totally lopsided one way or the other. Um, this one we're both getting to make moves. Um, now why don't I just put my bishop on d5? Like, What's the point of this queen to b3 move? No, I am putting my bishop on d5. This is happening. This bishop makes it to d5 and opposes that bishop. Unless I've missed something obvious. And I did calculate c4, and I just play knight a5 and win the pawn. So, okay. I still don't know what he's up to. I think I've got all these entry points covered. I'm gaining more space. This queen's blocking this pawn, thereby trapping the rook, which is probably now no longer going to activate on the A file. It's probably going here instead. Um, man, what a maneuvering game. I just keep going around and around. Um, so again, my idea is to play this, and then g h6, g5, g4, just throw it in, throw everything in on the king's side. Yes, I have a double pawn. No, I don't care. Also, maybe f5 comes to mind. Okay, I have to take this. He just keeps slowing down my attack. Either he's afraid of it, or it actually works, and that's why he's slowing it down. Um, either way, every time we trade pieces, we get one step closer to an endgame. And I still have a bishop to the knight, and if we trade on d5, it's not a bad bishop. Um, it looks a little hideous because the pawn's on f4, but I'm not worried. Um, this is a pretty committal decision, but this bishop is such a monster. I can't leave it unopposed. And yeah, once the bishop's gone, e2 is mine, e4 kind of sort of mine. Um, but yeah, my pieces are much more vital um, once the bishop is gone. Okay, so do I do rook e2? It doesn't instantly win a pawn, but it's very strong. Um, well, the only consideration is... No, 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 there's, there's no reason not to play this. It's the only reason I should have thought a little more about this. He could have played rook e1. That was his one chance to equalize this. Um... Now we move forward, somehow. Uh, which way? Which way do I go? I 
Okay, this looks fine. It's not, King has an escape square. Um, and now if he plays knight e5, I could maybe take it. The odds are definitely in my favor if he plays that move. Uh, not saying I win by force, but uh, it'd be hard to imagine losing that. Rook end games are fun. This one's more fun than most because I have a bishop and he doesn't. Uh, he's got a knight. Okay, arguably I could have done rook e8 and just... Wait, what's that? That's weird. Um... I mean, that king gets in the way of the knight now, so he's further from expelling my rook than he's ever been. Um, I'll just move my king forward and see where we go. Ah, this is the trick. Okay, he's winning in exchange. Uh, unless I have something to say about this, and I probably do. That's a really clever move. Um, if I do b4, king d1, um, pawn, rook takes, rook takes, pawn takes, I'm forking these, rook b7. So that's that won't work. Um, if I do f3, king d1, um, rook takes knight, king takes, pawn takes pawn, rook g1, bishop h2. I'm kind of in it. Kind of still fighting there. Also, pawn f3, king d1, bishop h2, king takes rook, pawn takes, oh, just as knight f3 there. That doesn't work so well. Um, so yeah, my rook's trapped. I'm getting a pawn for the exchange. It should be an okay end game. Um, the other thing I considered was b4, trying to do b3, but uh, none of that works. Um, so yeah, here we are with f3. Okay. See, so yeah, I'm not getting a passed pawn either. Um, hmm. That's kind of a problem. That's kind of a problem. Maybe I do have to go for that silly tactic I observed earlier, although it's not very good. Um, um I'm going to just try to push to gain some position. Uh, I'm kind of screwed here. That's okay. Um, so yeah, the rest is technique. Uh, let's see, how far am I down? I'm down an exchange and a pawn. Um, that might be difficult to hold. So I could try to confuse him, but that's about the best I can hope for. Okay. Um, pull the bishop back. He's going to check me. I have to go back, because if I go forward, he checks me again, and I have to run away from my pawns. Um, I play this because this denies him the time for playing b4 right away. And maybe in some miracle I can get behind this pawn. Um, realistically, though, it's going to be pretty difficult. 
Well, also I can get behind these pawns. So th this is just going to be a long, drawn-out endgame, if I'm lucky. Yeah, if I'm unlucky, like here... Um, well, this might be difficult. <laughs> um, I could do king d7. Force him to choose where to put the rook. But th I like that other guy's name. Yeah, that's a nice name. Especially because his profile says he doesn't give take backs ever. <laughs> so, Mouse Slip is a good name for somebody who never gives take backs. Um, Alright. I'm just trying to. I'm not trying to get him on a mouse slip. I'm trying to get him to be confused. If I can get any initiative from being him being confused, I'll take it. Yeah, rook b6 is the strongest move here. I have to go back and then back around. My position progressively degrades. Um, there isn't a whole lot I can do. Okay. Now there's something I can do, because this is a target. This is a careless move, unless I've miscalculated. Um, so, perhaps I have miscal... Oh, no. I think I still got this. I think I'm still okay here. For some reason I thought the rook on b8 didn't defend this pawn. And it totally does. Um... Yeah, no, he needed to just play b5 there, right? That's some miracle that actually does work out. Um, see, now I think I collect the pawn. Um, and stunningly, he doesn't have a square to threaten either of these two. He could threaten to go like rook a8, rook a7, and collect this, but um, my king would make it back in time. So I've been tricky here. I've been a little bit tricky. Yeah, if he played b5, I probably would have resigned right there, because, well, I would have played a couple more moves and then resigned. Um, but here, uh, it looks like I'm getting at least a pawn. So, you have to be a little bit tricky there. That was fun. I'll step behind this, since I can't go to e1, this e1. Um, at least I can attack the pawn that way. Alright, now we go back to e1. And back to f2 here. Because, um... Alright, you know, each pawn we trade, this gets closer to being a draw. I'll definitely trade. Um, now's the hard part. So I'm going to try to march up on this pawn. Note the little trap. You can't go there. Um, so I'm just going to play waiting moves until he finds a way to go forward. Ultimately, he's going to pick, does he want the rook on the 5th rank, does he want it on the 6th rank, or where. Um, so I go back. Now he plays like king b3 or king c3, and now I do bishop f2. This is not easy. I actually can't do that. That's not legal. Um, but, yeah, this is not an easy endgame. I would like to see some technique if he's going to win this. This, okay, all right, so, yep, king d3, we'll go back, that's okay. Just shuffle back and forth, okay. If he does king d3, I can repeat and hit the draw button before he moves. Unlike over the board, where if he plays king d3, you claim the draw, and then indicate on your score sheet that that's the move you would have played. Here you actually have to make the move and hit the button before... Yeah, it's funny. Um, 
Okay, so he's going to attempt to do something tricky with this bishop here. Um, hmm. Do I go to a1 straight away or do I go to b2 first? Yeah, I think I have to go b2 first. Oh, I see. If I go to b2, he traps my bishop. So I guess a1 straight away. That way if he plays... Well, if he plays rook c2, my bishop's still trapped. This is what I get for being clever. Um, yeah, no. My bishop's trapped if he just played rook c2, but he missed it. Um, so let's untrap the bishop and pretend I didn't do that. Um, yeah, I would collect the f-pawn but he'd get my bishop, and that's not a fair trade. Okay. Um, I want to stay on this side of the pawn. The closer I stay to this side of the board and try to attack the pawn from behind, the better off I am. Oh, well, I'm just losing this game, Snowball. I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm losing it with style, though. And that's what counts. <clears throat> it's not an easy endgame. Okay, surprisingly, I have not hit a three-fold repetition yet. Um, it's nice that the interface lets me know when I have hit threefold. But I would like to be able to claim it before I hit that position. Like, I shouldn't have to make the move and rush over to hit the draw button instantly. Um. So... I'm predicting that at some point he's going to have some frustration, he's going to throw in f6. Um, and that's not the right way to go. This is a difficult endgame, but putting his pawns on dark squares makes it even harder. So... When one questions how I get my bullet rating and my blitz rating, it's because I play these end games pretty tenaciously. Um, I don't go down without a fight. And people don't expect that sort of thing in blitz and bullet. Um, well, he's got to move something. My point is, if I can keep his king on his side of the board, this is going to be very difficult for him to win. Okay. So I think at this point I'm forced to play king d6. Oh. That's a problem. Um. That's a problem. Well, I don't, I have no choice here. I must play this. His playing f5 has allowed him to maneuver his rook like this. And now my king can't go back to defend the pawn. Um, there's only one way to defend it. Oh, and that hangs the other pawn. No, it doesn't. It's almost hung, but not quite. It's very nearly hung. Um... But yeah, f6 is not a move that black wants to make in this position. Because now the rook can make threats against this pawn, 
and either the king or the bishop is forced to defend it. In this case, the king cannot defend, so the bishop must. All right, my king's not able to approach his f pawn, so I might as well scope up um, the territory over here. Um, Okay, let's see if I can get him to play king a4. He has played king a4. Um, maybe I play bishop c3 here and just jettison the f-pawn. That might be my only try, because if I play bishop g5, he plays king a5, king a6, king a7, king b8. His king walks around and then rook takes pawn. Um, so I might be forced to just give up my f-pawn here to try to get enough activity. Um, I didn't think he was actually going to play king a4 because now I can trade my f-pawn for the d-pawn. Um, but I don't see any better option here. Um, the only other question is, should I play bishop g5 first, wait for him to play king a6, and then execute this maneuver with this king off sides? That's, that might be the way to go here. Um, yeah, that's looking more and more like the way to go. Bishop g5, king a5, bishop d2, king a6, bishop uh, e3, rook f there, king d7, king b5. I mean, it all transposes, but um, I think this king is better placed on a4 than elsewhere. Okay, so we're going to go into that line I was just looking at. I'm giving up the f-pawn to get the d-pawn. Um, and now if he's accurate, he plays king b5. He wants his king to be as close to this action as possible. I want the king to be as far from the action as possible. So... Um, Okay, I have to take this. Again, my bishop cuts this, so we have this little invisible wall going on. Um, I want my bishop on the long diagonal, although I also want my bishop covering c5. Ideally, I just want to push the pawn but leave the bishop where it stands, which is not possible. Um, so, okay, I move my bishop away. This is all still blockaded. If he goes king b4, maybe I go back. Maybe I just push. Um, okay, this is kind of a problem. I need to keep my... Oh, yeah, this is a huge problem. Um, hmm. Okay, we're going to have to improvise here. I need to deflect his rook off of the file. I'm giving up my deep on now. Um, but I didn't have anything better. Alright, so let's go back, try to keep out of range of the rook, and 
maybe hide my king over here. Um, again, his king can't force my king to move. Um, it's not how chess goes. So it's a bit of a walk for him to demonstrate the win. Okay, I think he's found it though. Um, uh, which way do I go? King there, king there. I'm one tempo away. Okay, I approach the pawn. Um, bishop here, king d4 is a problem. Um, Oh, he just plays king e4. Okay, yeah. Um, well, this should go quickly, right? So it should be possible for him just to dislodge my king without too much difficulty. Um, yeah, no, I can't see myself drawing this either. I think he's got this, so... Uh, yeah, I'm... I should probably concede at this point. All right. Yeah, good game, well played. Interesting. Um, so what happened? I mean, sure, I played a variation of an opening, both of which I really need more study in. But, I mean, that's why I experiment. So not every experiment goes well. <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, I forgot about the rook trap. I was commenting like during the game that I shouldn't have allowed the rook trap, but um, I don't know. And games are always tricky. Um, but if I don't have this rook e2 resource available, then this endgame's not so good. Um, so that kind of says that my plan of bishop d5 was not a very effective plan here. Okay, I had to trade knights. That's a given. But what followed didn't necessarily have to happen. It's like, what if I just do pawn takes here, right? Pawn takes and I've got a queen and I've got more space and okay I've got a double pawn he just blocks it. So this isn't such a good position either. So where did I goof up? Um, probably this. So this followed by bishop d5 was my big plan to simplify the position in my favor. Turns out that that position is not in my favor in the slightest. Um, and earlier in the game I kept talking about how I had this grand plan of pushing all the way up the king's side. Never got even anywhere close to that happening. Um, yeah, so I think this this is probably one of the critical positions, if not before I did the rook trade. Somewhere around here I just had no clue what was going on, and that's my own damn fault for playing this opening. And for playing it so adventurously, I should just learn to play boring chess and never take risks and always play variations I've seen before, and then I'll do better. But um, it's okay to lose a game once in a while. Yeah, it was a good game. All right, with that said, we're going to go back and see how other people are doing in the ladder. So I'll see you next time.